Hey machine knitters! So I want to talk to you today about these adorable little stockings. In this video I'm going to show you exactly how to make these on a standard knitting machine. I'll also give you uh, dimensions or stitch numbers and row counts for making this on a bulky knitting machine. So I have a new, to me, um, standard size knitting machine and so that's what I knit this little sock on. And um, it's just a little stocking. Uh, I did a cuff at the top. That's the back side. Um, I knit it exactly the same way you would a sock. And I changed colors halfway through. So, or for the main part of the sock. Now you could also change colors for the heel of the sock. Uh, you could put a little still flake or some sort of pattern on the front. Um, I'm actually going to do one that is uh, gray and red with some patterning. Will sort of look like a buffalo check. But these are the perfect size for just a little bit of candy, um, a little box of candy, or a couple candy bars. Um, so I wanted you to be able to see that size that they are. You can add a little candy cane on the outside. A mini candy cane would be super cute and hang these. So what I'm going to do is a little crochet hook. Um, I crocheted or you could do it on your knitting machine. Um, just a quick four stitch um, length uh, to make a little hook for these and it would end up being super cute. You can use the same colors that you use uh, in your stocking. So I did this stocking in a light blue with a darker blue, you know, a little bit like uh, my daughter's favorite movie. Um, I also did one in white with some green. So this one I need to stitch up and we're going to uh, just graft the toe together. So this is done on just a regular flatbed knitting machine. I feel like I'm really close to you guys. Um, so it ends up being a little bit uh, squarish because uh, when you do your toe you're going to end up mattress stitching down along the side and grafting the toe or Kitchener stitch up the toe. And then I also did one in white and purple for my daughter because she just thought that this purple was really pretty. So let's go ahead and find out how to make these adorable little stockings. Okay, we are going to start by casting on 52 stitches. And you'll need to cast on however your machine instructs you to. Okay, now before switching to my main yarn, I am going to use just some rip cord in between. Make sure that last stitch went through. And I'm just going to cut it. This is also called ravel cord. That will just make it easier to take our waist yarn off at the end. So now you want your carriage on the right of your machine, so you could have done that from the left. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure that my row counter is set to zero. I'm going to put in my white yarn and I am going to knit uh, 32 rows. first begin you want to make sure you got every stitch. Okay so I am at row 32 and now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my weights off and I am going to put all my beginning stitches back on so that we have a folded rib here. I right, folded cuff of sorts. So now I'm taking the stitch that's right there along my ravel cord line. I want all the white stitches. I don't want the green ones. That was my waist yarn. And I am actually going to use my three stitch transfer tool.
Okay, and as I get to the end, I want to make sure that I have a stitch on every needle. And so you just want to pull your ravel cord and it helps to reveal those stitches. You also want to make sure you get the very bottom stitch, not one that's up a couple. Otherwise your entire, your stitches can unravel. There we go. Okay, and then you want to, you can pull these out and push all your yarn, your stitches back against the bed. And then this is where we are going to switch color. So we're going to take that out. You can cut it. And then we're going to switch to our main color. My yarn, I already have my feeder threaded. So I'm going to switch to my main color. And now I am going to knit 26 rows. So I'll reset my row counter. Okay, so now we are going to start the heel. In order to do the heel, we are going to pull all of the needles on the left side of zero into holding position. You're going to set your machine for holding, however that looks on your machine. And then we're going to start sh short rowing the heel. So we're going to pull out the needle closest, or on the side, the same side as the carriage and we are going to knit across. Then we pull out the needle on this side of the carriage. And we're going to continue that until we're down to um, nine needles. There'll be nine on the right, nine on the left, and eight in the middle. Okay, so that's nine with eight in the middle. So what I'm going to do on this last one is our left needle is going to come out, but I'm also going to push this needle back into working position. So now we're actually short rowing out. So I'm going to move up my weight. And now the needle on the opposite side of the carriage is going to go back into work. Okay, so now this is going to go back into working, but we're also going to put all the needles back into work. Um, if you wanted to change the color for your heel, then you could have done that before we started short rowing the heel. That's no big deal. So now um, I'm going to take my machine out of hold so that all these needles knit and I'm going to do another 16 rows. Okay, so now it's time to short row the toe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut my main yarn because I'm going to switch back to white for the toe of this stocking. So my toe and my cuff are both going to be white. Okay, and again we are going to pull our left side of zero all out to holding position, switch our machine. That's an important step. Don't forget to switch your machine. I'm just going to put a clip on the end of my yarn. To give it a little bit of weight. And I am going to start short rowing. We are going to pull our first needle 
on the carriage side out to hold. Okay, so again, this is our last one going out, and we're going to, at the same time, push opposite our needle opposite the carriage into working position, and continue our short row out after that. Okay, now on our last one, I'm going to knit all the way across again. So take your machine off of holding. And now I'm going to knit this off onto the waist yarn. Because this whole thing is going to become our toe, and we're going to Kitchener stitch that. So I'm going to leave a length of yarn enough to seam up my sock this time. It is important here to make sure that your waist yarn is very contrasting so that it's easy to pick up and find these stitches when you are grafting your sock together. Okay, so here is our sock all finished. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull our ravel cord so that we can take this um, waist yarn off of our sock. So once your ravel cord is out, this should just pull right off. Okay, then we want to look at some of these extra strings that are around here. Um, you can just weave these in, uh, weave them down the side. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to graft our toe seam. So we've got this is where we ended and I'm actually just going to tie these two colors together. You don't want to pull too tight. You can tell when you pull too tight um, it starts to gather your sock and you don't really want it gathered. You want it nice and flat. And since this stuff is going to be in my seam, I'm just going to knot it and cut it. Um, you could weave in the ends, but that's your choice. This is going to be on the inside of my stocking. So, okay. So we want our stocking to shape up just like, just like this. So we're going to work. We are going, these, this is our waist yarn, so I don't need to worry about these strings. So I'm going to thread my needle. And the very first thing I'm going to do is just combine these. So I'm going to work my sock inside out. I want to work from the pearl side. getting everything arranged how you need it. Okay, so I'm just going to go through um, my loop up here to close this up. It's my end loop. Okay, and then we are going to graft this or we're going to use the Kitchener stitch. Okay, so I'm going to go across into this first stitch. Now you want to make sure that you're working, see that's not actually the one that I want. 
You want to make sure that if you've got two white rows like I do, or two rows of any color like I do, you want to look for the one that was with the uh, waste yarn. So my waste yarn is this light green here. So I want to make sure I'm taking these stitches from my waste yarn. Otherwise, uh, when you pull your waste yarn off, you'll have all these stitches over here that just fall off. And then you might as well just make a new sock because it'll take just as long to figure out what's what there. Okay, so now after we've gone through that stitch, we want to come across and we want to use that same stitch um, that we used before. Okay. And then we're going to go from the side into a new stitch. And again, make sure you're catching all the stitches that are along your waist yarn. So then we want to go in the new stitch next door and over to the old stitch that we just used. This is the old stitch on this side. Okay, and then we're going down into the new stitch, next door into the new stitch. And across to the old stitch. Let's show that again. Make sure that we're. And you want to make sure again that these are the ones coming out of your waist yarn. So I'm going next door to my new stitch and then across to my old stitch. And these need to be the stitches on the waist yarn. So next door, once you get going, this is actually super easy. Then across to my old stitch, especially when you're going across because it's really easy to find and even next door is easy to find. Okay, across the one you just came out of. Next door to the new stitch that's on the waist yarn. <laughs> across to the stitch you just used. Okay, so we're going to continue this all the way to the uh, end of the sock. We're going to close that up and then we're going to come back and mattress stitch our sock together. So I will show you that when we're finished with the Kitchener stitch. Okay, so I just weaved in um, an end of white yarn. And so now I'm going to mattress stitch up the side of this sock. Okay, we want to go under that bar. Okay, and I'm going to go back over to the other side. And then I will be able to kind of pull this little all tight. Okay, then I'm going back to the other side and I'm going to look for that stitch where I came out. I came out right there. It's nice and easy to see with this white on green yarn. Then we're going back to the other side where you came out. You're grabbing the bar that's underneath there. You don't have to pull these tight yet. Going back to the other side. I'm finding the bar underneath to the other side and just poke it in where your string came out, lift up and you should see a bar there. Okay, and so then after you do a few stitches, you can pull that tight. Okay, and then you can just continue all the way to the top. So let me show you the top and see you won't be able to see that white yarn, a white string at all even though it's underneath the green. So when you get to the top, um, usually we'd go, we'd go up the front and then around down the back. 
Um, I will probably kind of do these together uh, since it's just a stocking. This is the back of the stocking. You're not really going to see it. Okay. So these are super easy, quick projects for just a quick little treat um, for a friend or uh, the children.